All right, hello everybody. My name is Peter, and uh, welcome to another video where we do have some pretty cool pens to look at. This video is sponsored by Audible and fueled by coffee. I still do have this French press and the little French press sweater. In fact, there is a coffee sweater to go along with it. I mean, I'm sweater for the mug somewhere, but I took it off to wash it and forgot to put it back on there. Mm, it's good. All right, these, check it out. These are the pens we're gonna be looking at today. They're pretty cool. They're by Benu Pens. I'm gonna do one drawing using all three of these and check these out. I, I'm doing the, I filmed this in a weird direction order in that I've already, yesterday I sat down and honestly, I already filmed one intro to this video, the part I'm filming right now, but then I edited it together and everything, but then I rewatched it. And then I was like, Peter, you can't put that on, on YouTube. You were in a bad mood while you were filming that. But today I'm in a better mood. And also it's beneficial, I think, because after I filmed that intro, I went and actually started the drawing where I used these three these three pens, and I think it's beneficial to have drawn with the pen some uh, before I talk about them. So let's talk about them briefly, and then uh, I'll show you the drawing, of course. So if you go to the Benu Pens website, which is in the description, of course, you'll notice that a lot of their pens have these uh, sparkly bits in there, and it seems to be one of the main things that sets them aside uh, but I do like that they have a whole section of their website dedicated to their process. There's like 15 different steps of uh, designing it, realizing it, prototyping it, you know, and then like pouring in the, the I don't know what they call it, some sort of resin or acrylic into the molds. And they have all these little containers full of uh, flakes of glitter. Sometimes, you know, they're all different colors. They have a very wide selection of different pens. And uh, they have maybe maybe like 10 or 15 different collections. Here, you can see pens from three different collections here. And in each collection, there's still like 10 or 15 more pens. So they have a lot of pens. This one right here is their Symphony Pen from the Supreme Collection. And uh, all of these have, uh, you can see this one does have a tiny bit of a subtle leak problem. It seems like whenever I take the cap off, there's a little bit of ink around here. But like I said, I have done a fair bit of drawing with this one already. It seems to be like it's not a ton of ink. Apparently, all of these pens have Schmidt Iridium points, which are apparently manufactured by Jowo. Is that how you say that? That's another nib brand manufactured by Jowo and then assembled by Schmidt or something. I can't, I can't keep track of them all. I don't know what iridium means in this case, because then I think on the website it advertises that they're steel nibs, but maybe I read that wrong. I mean, it's a, they're good feeling pens. They're not like hand carved or something, but I'm assuming each one of these with all the different glitter and stuff in there would come out looking at least slightly different. I don't see if I feel like it would be much harder to make them look identical than the same. So you get all the different little glitters and stuff in there. I like how it goes up. I just like the shape of this pen. Let's see if it posts. Oh look, already more ink appeared. Where did all that ink come from just now? I just wiped it off. I put the cap back on. Maybe the ink is in the cap. No, maybe, I don't know. Anyways, it posts good too if you're into that sort of thing. This is a bold nib, and you'll notice that our next two pens have an M and an F nib, so I'm gonna have all three different major nib families represented, and I'm gonna draw one picture with all three nibs, and that should help me with line width. With, width, with line width, line weight. 
variation in such things, right? And this is their, uh, I'm gonna turn the paper over, All right? And this is their blue tattoo from the tattoo collection. It's got a lot of fun little details and I like the little background texture behind it there. It really looks like it's been carved away or that maybe it's like leather embossed and it kind of seems like a rough leathery texture back there. It's got dice and stars and crossed revolvers and roses and a compass rose and some little ribbons and it says Benu and a snake and a skull, you know, flames, what more could you want? And then in here, there you go, this is the medium nib. I haven't noticed uh, any ink leakage problems with this one. It does post well also, although this one, personally, I've been drawing with the caps off of these ones because they're they're not light pens. They're, they just feel, they feel solid. They're not overly heavy, but having the cap on the back to me feels a little, just a little bit too heavy after drawing for a few minutes and they feel pretty good just like this without the cap on the back. And finally here we have the Ocean Breeze from the Euphoria collection. A lot more glittery stuff here. I just, I do enjoy the, uh, like the angled, the facets on this pen, but also how the design in the resin or whatever it is in there, like it's 3D, it goes into it, right? Plus all the little glittery flakes. It's just pretty. Right? This is the fine nib. And once again, it does post fine and it says Bennu right there. Not really sure how to pronounce the word Bennu, Bennu, apples and Bennu news. So pretty sweet pens. When they got in touch with me, uh, they're like, hey, do you want a pen to review? I was like, yeah, sure. And I picked this one, the Ocean Breeze, because uh, I, mostly I like the shape of it. Uh, but then they're like, hey, let's send you three different different nib widths, widths. And I was like, okay, fine, send three. But look, I already have too many pens already. So um, since you, the viewers, are the ones that enable me to get these pens, I feel like it's only right that I give a bunch of them back to you now. So I'm going to be trying to do a lot more giveaways. You can have all of these. There'll be a link to the giveaway uh, in the description. It's on Instagram again. I'm sorry if that doesn't work for you but it does seem to be working for a lot of people and it's still getting the pens out there into the hands of the people, I think. So look, this pen sells for $190. This one send, sells for 170. I think this one sells for like 130 ish. So that's almost $500 worth of pens. So go try your luck, enter the giveaway. All you have to do is leave a comment on the post. If the Instagram post, the most recent one on my Instagram profile is about a giveaway, then you can still enter. It's not too late. I mean, one of them is slightly leaking. I hope that's not weird of me to give that one away. I mean, I'm not charging for it. So worst case scenario, someone else can figure it out, right? It could be a simple fix, like pushing something like a little gasket or twisting something. I don't know how it works. Still a free pen. Speaking of which, now is a great time to check out Audible. I personally have been getting a lot more into it than I ever have before. They have a terrific selection of, well, I've been enjoying the nonfiction stuff like uh, I read or listened to a book called The Dictator's Handbook. Um, Why Bad Behavior is Often Good Politics. I think I mentioned that before. Another one called The Discoverers. Plus, now is a wonderful time to join since you can join Audible Plus for only $4.95 a month for your first six months and get access to thousands of high quality titles, Audible originals, podcasts, and you can just listen to them on demand, download them. They're there for you whenever you need them. So to get started, go to audible.com slash Peter Draws or text the word Peter Draws to 500, 500. So we're gonna do the drawing now. And like I said, I have already started the drawing, which I feel a little, a little bit skeptical about, but hopefully I can pull it together, turn it into something I like and enjoy, and 
If not, it's still always a good stepping stone to the next drawing, which I may like and enjoy a little bit more. All right, here's the drawing. I used all three of the pens. I will say I used the fine nib and the bold nib the most. It's hard to justify using the medium nib as much when you have the fine and the bold. It's like if you're using the fine and you want a bolder nib, why would you just go a little bit bolder when you could go a lot bolder? And if you're using the bold nib and you want a little and you want to get finer, why would you just go medium when you could go fine, right? It's hard to justify. So, I mean, I use the medium nib a little bit just because I wanted to use all three pens. Uh, but I will say the, the fine and the bold nib were used the most. And I will say that bold nib, I think it's not really leaking that much anymore because I think what really happened is maybe it leaked initially or somehow some ink really did get in the cap because I stuck uh, some, some, what are they called, Q-tips? I guess maybe that's a trademark term. I think they're really called cotton swabs. I stuck them down in there into the cap and swirled them around. And here's some footage of I stuck a camera down into the cap. And it's just, there's a lot of just ink in the cap. I don't know how all that ink got in the cap. Uh, but I think that was what was just getting onto the pen over and over again. Because the more I, I cleaned it out and then I put it back on the cap and then not as much ink was getting back onto the pen. I'm not 100% sure what was going on. Anyways, the drawing went, look, I think it's normal for artists to get a little bit bent out of shape about their art and overthink it and everything. But the main, ins the main inspiration for a lot of this piece was just some rocks I saw one time in California. I know that sounds exotic, maybe unless you live in California. Look, I live on the East Coast and... California feels exotic to me mostly because it's far away. But I went there once. Look, one time, I'll tell you, I, one time I was invited. This is years ago. I was invited to be on a, a game show uh, for like some like YouTube channel game show or something. I don't know. Maybe it was for TV or something. I was invited to be on a game show for it, it, something in Los Angeles, right? Because that's like where all that sort of stuff is. And so I booked a trip to to LA and I invited a friend to go with me. And so, uh, but then at the last moment, I think I've mentioned this a long time ago, at the last moment I was like, I, at the last moment after I had booked all the flights and everything, I realized I, I, I did some research about this game show and what it was all about. And it was, I guess, I don't know, for kids or not, it was not really what I was all about. I like watched one of the episodes. I don't even know what the channel was anymore. And pretty much it was all like fart jokes. That's the pretty much the whole premise of the game show. It was like one of those things where you like answer quiz questions and give goofy answers and pretty much just fart jokes was the main premise. And I was like, uh, you know, I don't think I want to be on that game show. Not that I'm like better than that. I mean, maybe I'd like to be, but I'm not like above that. I just suddenly felt less enthusiastic about it. Right. But I'd still booked the tickets and I was like, hey, this is a great chance to just go relax in California, explore LA a little bit. And the, of course, LA is a little bit crazy because it's never exactly like you imagine it from the movies until you go there. It's mostly just a lot of traffic, but the coast, the beaches are amazing because when you drive around those on, on those like curvy roads on the coast, you're like, wow, I feel like I'm in a movie. And then you realize it's because that's where they filmed all the movies. But anyways, anyways. When I was out on the beach, I found some of these crazy rocks in these tide pools. Not rocks that I could pick up, but rocks that I could stand on. And, I mean, I have the pictures somewhere. Probably on my phone somewhere. If I find them, I'll put them up on the screen right now. But they have these amazing lines in them that I really loved. And they stuck in my mind ever since. And they've been inspiring me for years. And so that's part of what's been going on here. Oh, there's a hair on my tongue part of what's been going on here but i mean also inspired by everything else i've seen just i'm also heavily inspired by things like smoke and like ink swirls and just like cracks and other regular rocks and sidewalks and just clumps of dirt uh like lines in the wood stuff like that but then i i get bent out of shape i'm like i'm just drawing you know the same thing over and over again it's just 
a clump of lines that doesn't look like anything. Is it good enough? You know, so then at the end of the drawing, you'll see that I added like a little face at the bottom. So then it may be, you know, faces are good. At least I tell myself faces are good because, you know, maybe it gives something for the the brain, the mind to, to latch on to when you're looking at it. I don't know. I, I, sometimes I, I bother myself because I'm like, Peter, you're overthinking it. But then that's probably normal to do with art. I'm just, I'm overthinking it, but also I'm not giving myself, try not to give myself a hard time about overthinking it, right? It's okay. Just draw, get a little bit angsty about it. It's okay. And then move on to the next drawing. Everything's fine. Also, I will say, I meant to tell you a story about my coffee cup, my Daft Punk mug. Someone very observantly noticed that I no longer have the two zip ties on the handle to my coffee mug. It was, that's be, I mean, I'm very impressed that someone even noticed that. Um, basically what happened was I recently started drinking coffee again, right? And so I pulled the old mug out and I was like, you know, the whole reason I put those two zip ties on the handle was, well, for no good reason, just because, you know, I wanted them there. The same reason I do anything, I guess. I just put them there because I... Because I could, I guess. Um, anyway, so then I tried cutting them off. And I was using my, like, uh, this little exacto knife thing right here. And uh, the first, I was being very careful. Uh, and I was cutting one off and pushing. And uh, it's kind of hard with an exacto knife. I mean, uh, zip ties are pretty resilient. But you can get them off. But it takes a little bit of pressure, right? And the first one popped off pretty well. And nothing happened. But I should say, for some reason, I was determined. <laughs> For some reason, I was determined to do this while the, the mug was completely full of coffee. Like I had taken maybe one sip. And so I was emboldened. I was emboldened by the success of my first removal of the zip tie. And then so then I popped, try, attempted to pop the second zip tie off and it was giving me a little bit more trouble. Maybe I didn't have as good of an angle on it or something and... I wasn't getting the blade in there the right way. But then when I popped it off, have you ever watched that movie? I'm not sure what movie it was. It's a submarine movie where like the sonar guy, he's always um, sitting in his little sonar room in the submarine. And every now and then he has his headphones on and he leans out of the sonar room to talk to the captain of the submarine. And he's, and he says, splashes. Right? What movie was that? Was that a U five seven one, The Widowmaker, or I don't know. There was a time in my life when I was really all about these submarine movies. Anyways, because the the destroyer ships or various enemy ships would go over them, they would sail over them while they were submerged and drop depth charges in the water. And so this guy, he'd be listening very co carefully on his headphones for listening listening to for splashes in the water. And then that's when they knew that they were dropping the depth charges, which are basically barrels uh, of explosives that they would throw in the water. And then the explosives would sink down into the water near the submarine and then explode. And I think it's not as much the explosion, but the compression of the water that would do a lot of damage to the submarine potentially, right? And if you ever look this up on YouTube, you can... S look up depth charge explosions and on the surface it creates this incredible effect right where at first it's just like this little it's like a little uh bulge it's like two stages Poof. one little bulge or just like poofs up a little bit and then like one second later there's this huge explosive pillar of water that shoots straight up in the air it's just tons and tons of water as this i don't know I don't know exactly how it works, but it's just like, it's like bloop, and then boom, just tons of water shooting straight up in the air. And that's what happened with my coffee cup as I popped the second zip tie off, except it wasn't water. It was <sighs> hot coffee. And I was just sitting there. You know when something happens and you're just struggling to take it all in? You're just kind of sitting there shocked. I'm just sitting there like dripping in coffee. Somehow the, co the, the, the coffee drops like dodged my keyboard. Like this is like my new favorite keyboard. It's like, wait, let me look on the bottom. 
Vortex. It's like a little, you know how people are into mechanical keyboards these days. I mean, it was like a hundred or something dollars, but it's a nice one. Anyways, I like it. And I was just happy, unless one of the coffee droplets somehow snuck right between some of the keys without me noticing. I don't think any coffee got on my keyboard somehow because it went, some coffee went past it and got on my monitors and uh, it was all over my desk, all over my leg, my arms, like it was on my face dripping down, my chair all over the floor, stuff on my desk, you know, my desk was soaked. I was like sopping everything up, drying everything off. That Those are the times when I'm so thankful I don't put cream or sugar in my coffee because that would have made everything much more sticky, you know? Plain black coffee is pretty simple uh, to, to clean up. It's mostly just like as easy to clean up as water, except that anything it touches, it makes a little bit brown if it, if it stains it. That's about it. But at least it's not sticky or stinky, right? Anyway, so I had a little coffee explosion like it just went everywhere like it was just it just stunned me it was so unexpected it, it's like the, there was a little explosive in the bottom of my coffee cup and it just went poof. it was just, i was really stunned i know i've said that like five times but i just need to reiterate how surprised i was by how the coffee just went everywhere because it didn't seem like my coffee mug moved but it was just like that little f flick of me successfully cutting the the zip tie off of there while I was trying to hold the coffee mug still. Anyways, you guys understand, right? Anyways, thanks for watching here. The, yeah, all the pens work pretty good. One minor leakage issue, possibly with one. I'm still not sure about it. Maybe it was just, maybe it messed up when I filled it or something. I don't know. So, uh, yeah. All right. Y'all have a good one. Okay. I'm going to go do something else now. I don't know. Okay, bye.